if there's a valuable freedom that we take for granted, I think it is our religious liberty. Religious freedom is one of those foundational freedoms for all of us. Sometimes we don't appreciate and the need for it until it starts to crumble in some way. One of my motivations in the work that I do is that I really want to be someone who is able to contribute to conversations around justice, conversations around faith, and again, how those things intersect. When you say hospital chaplain, what comes to mind is people in hospital gowns, uh, lying in beds with lots of white sheets and tubes, but that's perhaps the smallest part of what I do. When I think back to my internship with BBJC, I got a chance to really explore, just to get a sense of how this legacy of fighting for religious freedom sort of ties into this really important conversation about justice and freedom and equity for all people. We can certainly look around the world and see so many people who are uh, being religiously persecuted right now. But we also can't take for granted that freedom here in our country and know that our First Amendment guarantees are only as valuable as our advocacy for them. We are moving away from a sense of church that is so bounded by four walls of the building, four walls of the institution, and we're really shifting back towards the ecclesia, where people are, you know, out in the street, where people are, you know, free to move uh, in order to share and be in relationship and community with one another. When I hear the word uh, community in English, in Spanish, the first word that pops into my mind is the word uh, compañerismo and it actually means fellowship. More and more of our churches, especially our, our younger pastors that are getting into the ministry, are looking at the importance of our churches having that compañerismo, that fellowship uh, outside of the church. There's something of value or something of importance in proximity, you know, and being near people and rooted in community with people and how that pours into you and how that informs you and how that shapes you in order to, to make a more authentic sort of approach to ministry. I get to sit and listen and just to be present to my world. The patients will say, oh, uh, what church do you work at? Or where do you minister? And I'll say to them, this is my parish. And as Latinos, we tend to be very good at loving the Lord with all of our heart. Our services are passionate and our work is passionate. And we love the Lord with all of our hands. You know, our, the people in our churches, they work, they sacrifice. But one of the areas where I think we challenge our pastors is to love the Lord with all their mind, to, to learn about other ministries, to think about how some of the members in their churches might have a heart uh, and a passion for things like religious liberty or justice. It is really important that people of faith, people of conscience, people of goodwill respond in a moment such as this. How do we do a better job in our churches of, of auditing and examining our theologies, our institutions, our infrastructures, uh, to get a sense of how these things have perpetuated these systems that we see? And the beauty is when we look at people in the street, we really are seeing the church in action it's as people are taken to the street as an act of freedom, as an act of protest, uh, as, an, as an act of faith.